Good evening. Good evening. It is not typically our practice on Ash Wednesday to have a lot of announcements. However, there are some exceptional events that are happening in our in our community, in our world right now. So before we begin our worship service, we do have some announcements we want to make. In case you did not get our email or see our Facebook class, uh, this, <laughs> you know, this, all of these donations for blankets or sleeping bags have come in since 9 o'clock last night um, when the call went out um, through Kathy Anderson. She has a staff member who, um, not through survivors of torture, but just independently as someone who has a personal connection to Ukraine, put out a call to help find sleeping bags and blankets for um, that will be going to Ukrainian refugees. She texted me and said, do you have any of those bag lady sleeping bags about? And Kay Murphy's here and she's smiling with me because when I visited with the bag ladies on Monday, I said, when you're done with those sleeping bags, just bring them over and put them in my office. I, I There's something I want to do with them. And then it was the next day that Kathy Anderson texted to say, do you have any of those lying around? <laughs> And I said, oh, you mean the six that are like right here next to me? Um, and so that, but that's what led to a conversation um, about uh, this drive to provide blankets and sleeping bags, especially um, going to Ukrainian refugees. Um, and so all of this has just come in since last night. Um, it will all be picked up tomorrow. Um, it will be put on a plane that's being organized by the Ukrainian Council. It's connected to um, the house down in Belleville Park, the Ukrainian Council that does that work there at the international houses. It will be put on a plane and taken to Poland um, and then distributed um, to refugees both there and then they're hoping to get into the country of Ukraine as well to be able to distribute these and all the other humanitarian um, donations that are going to be on that plane. So I just want to take a moment to give thanks to God for this opportunity to be a part of hopefully being able to provide some comfort in some small way. Um, so I want to recognize that tonight and thank you all for your generosity and support. Um, also in the back of our, of our worship space tonight near our sound booth, we do have a prayer station set up. Um, you're welcome to, there are two different prayers available there, but you're welcome to at any point in the service. Um, light a candle and, and say a prayer, especially for all those, all, the, all those who are suffering as a result of the violence in Eastern Europe. Um, so you're welcome to, to do that as well. And I think we'll leave that up for worship this weekend. So continue to light those candles and lift up your prayer, um, all those who are suffering during this difficult time. So, um, so there's that. I'm also very pleased to welcome a guest. Um, we have Allison Dur Duran, if you want to come up. Allison is a part of Lasagna Love San Diego, and um, you have kids at Benchley, is that right? I do. I have one daughter from the second grade at Benchley. At Benchley, which is our neighborhood school. So she reached out to us because we've been um, partnering with Benchley when they needed space to provide some fellowship or more like party type events for their kids. They've been using our parking lot, and so she reached out to say, I'm a part of this organization called Lasagna Love that helps to feed hungry people, just provide that love and comfort. Could we use your parking lot? And that led to a wonderful conversation about how we can help partner with Lasagna Love for an event that's um, coming up on March 19th. Um, our entire season of Lent is going to be focused on hunger and on organizations that help feed hungry people. So this is a really natural, wonderful service opportunity. So I want to welcome Allison and just who you want to share um, whatever you wanted to share with us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Sarah. It was very fortuitous that I emailed her the exact day that she was looking us up, so it, it just must have been the stars. Um, so the Vanilla was actually started right here in San Diego, so this is definitely a community organization. It was started during the pandemic. Um, our founder, Rhiannon Nen, she was just feeling helpless, like we were all feeling helpless. Our neighbors were suffering, we were homeschooling our kids all of a sudden, and she just felt like she could do something, and that was to make lasagna. So she reached out on Facebook and she said, does anybody want a lasagna? And she got responses from people who were like, that would be amazing. She got responses from people that said, I don't need a lasagna, but I'd love to help you make lasagna. And so Lasagna Love was born in 2020. Um, she's been doing it since then. She's built it into a uh, global nonprofit organization. We have three countries that work for us, the USA, Canada, and Australia. And we have over 30,000 chefs globally. And we have made over 150,000 lasagnas, and over 750,000 people have been fed from our lasagnas. 
And that's actually just the ones that have come through our portal. We've also done events, um, for example, the Colorado wildfires, a group in Colorado banded together and I think they made like 400 lasagnas and people just drove through and picked them up and they were hot and ready to eat and brought comfort to those folks suffering. So we do tons of events all around the globe like that. But our main mission is that we um, have people that reach out to us that would like a lasagna for whatever reason. They could be struggling financially and they can't afford food. They could just be like single mom homeschooling her kids that lost her job and working, you know, working full time even and just can't get dinner on the table. For whatever reason, we don't judge. We just make them a lasagna. We make it of our own hearts and our love. We bring it to their house warm, ready to eat, and we get a lot of um, thank you notes from them just saying, I just, this is exactly what I needed, you know, you can't solve my hunger problem except for this one meal, or you can't solve my financial problem except for this one meal, or I don't have to cook tonight, and it's just lovely. So um, how it works is that we have a portal where you can sign up to be a chef, and you will go through a very small training, it's like a food safety training. And then you will get um, assigned to a regional lead in our area, uh, Victoria's the name of our regional lead, and she will start matching you with families who need lasagnas. And you can do as much or as little as you want. You can make one lasagna a month, you can make 12 lasagnas every week if you want. Um, and it's up to you, and you can pause if you want to, or you can do it as long as you want or as much as you want, and every single lasagna is appreciated. Um, so once you get on the portal and you fill out your information and you're matched, you can start cooking and you'll talk directly with your matches, you'll figure out when you're going to deliver. It's up to you when you want to deliver. Um, I'm a full-time mom and working and all of that kind of stuff, so I deliver on the weekends and that's what works for me and that's perfectly fine. You can deliver all week long as well. It's just up to you and your match. Um, there's other ways you can support Lasagna Love if you don't like to cook, don't want to cook. Um, you can support us financially uh, with a donation. It's a nonprofit. Um, you can um, you can deliver lasagnas if you don't want to cook, but you can say, I've got a car and I'm willing to drive and, and deliver. Or you can sometimes, with an opportunity to open, you can become part of the Lasagna Love's organization where we work on our infrastructure and marketing and um, outreach and things like that. So um, I think that's all I really had to say about it, and I'm happy to take any questions via email. Pastor Sarah has my email address. Um, we really hope that many, many of you will sign up and join us for the event that we're having on the 19th. We always love more chefs. We have a great need here in this part of the county. East County and South County, a lot of suffering happened during the pandemic, so we're really hoping that you guys will not only sign up for this event, but stay on board with us and make as many lasagnas as makes you happy. Yeah. Thank you for having me. So Allison is going to head out to go back to her kids, but we do have flyers available as you leave today. You want to pick, pick one up, English on one side, Spanish on the other, that talks a little bit about their process of requesting or requesting a lasagna or making a lasagna. And again, we'll share all the pertinent information about specifically our distribution event that's going to happen in our parking lot on March 19th. And there's a Facebook event page that um, just I just created tonight that you can get those links to those portals and registrations as well. So those are all my announcements. Pastor Manuel, do you want me to do the ash discussion? Are you going to come up here? Or? No. <laughs> okay. um, so so again, now we'll turn our hearts towards um, Ash Wednesday tonight. Um, we will be distributing ash towards the beginning of the service. And so the way that we will have that work is um, each of us will be at the bottom of the stairs. We, we would prefer just for kind of spacing reasons that you don't kind of bunch up in the, in the aisle, but rather kind of wait row by row to come up and receive your ashes and then return to your seats down the side aisles. I know we have kids who maybe this is your first time at Ash Wednesday, and I always try to make sure everyone knows these ashes are not hot, right? They will not hurt you. So that's what I'm saying. Yep. And the same goes with communion. Um, it's not hot either. <laughs> but we don't want you um, bunching up on the aisle, performing those lines to come forward. So just come up by row, be patient.
participation. Everybody's going to get communion through the service. Um, we'll start on this side and then swap over to this side and do our choir last. Um, and there's plenty of communion this evening for us because Leslie just brought another tray of communion up for us. So, and we'll go through that instruction again at communion. And so we'll um, begin now with a moment of silence as we turn our hearts um, towards the season of repentance on this evening with our Ash Wednesday. I invite you now to rise as you are able as together we sing our opening hymn, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. It's number 319. Mm -hmm.
We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation. So we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to disciplines of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. <clears throat> Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our faults, by our own faults, by our own most grievous faults, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and repentance, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life to the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring us to all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants 
servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, <laughs> beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness from the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always re rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Oh. <laughs> the word of God, word of life. sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where <coughs> your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. During my high school years, my sister Natalie was attending school at UC Berkeley. So I spent a lot of time on the sidewalks of Berkeley, checking out the head shops and eating dollar slices and pizza from Lonnie's. Or when I had a little extra change in my pocket, I would be hitting up uh, Top Dog for a Louisiana hot ring. On occasion, if I had a little extra cash, I'd stop at Russ Butin's records and rifle through the record bins. In the summer of 1988, I picked up an album by Kimo Burnett titled The Talking Animals. I took the album home and put it on my turntable. As I still love to do, I listened to the album as I read the liner notes. The first track on the album truly marked me to this day. And the lyrics actually came into my head this morning as I showered and dressed and got prepared for the day. <coughs> The title of that first track on the album is The Wild Truth. And the lyrics go like this. 
You never said it was a bed of roses, but you never said it was a bed of nails. You never told me about the rubber hoses or how unsteady were the justice scales. I need the wild truth. On the street, there are a billion people. They got no love. They got no hope. They got no youth. They got no beauty. They're looking backwards through a telescope. They need the wild truth. Whatever happened to the man walking down the street with his hands in his pockets, whistling a tune? Science fiction and nostalgia have become the same thing. I don't know how to make any choices anymore. I mean, who do I vote for? I get the feeling that as soon as something appears in the paper, it ceases to be true. I want to meet the man who can crack this world of justice like a safe. Someone with the courage to allow room for good things to run wild. These words hit me 34 years ago, and it strikes me again even more this year as we begin our seasonal Lent. Over two years in this pandemic, and reading headlines of a potential for it to be an endemic now, but we've lost so much over the last two years. Plans for vacation, plans to visit family, even our routine family visits. Worshipping together with family and friends. School for our youth. And the necessity of socialization for our young people and for all of us. We live in a world of broken relationships where political division and racial division make the headlines of our newspapers and social media feeds. We live with the daily news of shattered lives in our own country, and now on the other side of the planet, in Ukraine. Our world seems more shattered and broken than we'd like to admit. We're no longer able to hide our heads in the sand and hope that the danger will pass us by. Now more than ever, we have our daily death as a companion. With this as our backdrop, kind of our funeral hall, <clears throat> our service begins on this Ash Wednesday as we hear these frightening words spoken as ashes in the shape of a cross are smudged on our foreheads. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Do we really need a reminder of the fragility of life? Have we not been bombarded with images that make us make the denial of loss and death nearly impossible for us? Are there not other words that might be spoken better suited for this occasion? These were the questions that ran through my mind as I this morning as Pastor Sarah and I prepared for our drive through Ash Wednesday and watched as the sun rose over our Lake Murray lot. As I and we enter the season of repentance and renewal called Lent, how can I forget that I am dust now more than ever? And yet, I need both to speak and hear these words now. They're a reminder of what is and the promise of what will be. These words, along with the cross of Christ on our foreheads, represent both warning and promise. Lent is a time when we strip away the facade to get to the basics of what it means to be a person of faith. And this has its roots in the ancient purpose of Lent. It's largely forgotten, though some are rediscovering this meaning. Lent, in its earliest form, was a time when those preparing for baptism at the great overnight Easter Vigil worship event, a service for confirmation students that lasted all night, from sundown to sun. And those preparing for baptism would, as part of their final preparation, leave behind all the things of this world that got in the way of their relationship with God. 
And so they spent time in fasting and praying and serving the poor and other disciplines of faithful life. Things that other Christians would do year-round, not just during Lent. And they went through their final instruction of what a, and what being a follower of Jesus was all about. And they prepared for lives of loving service in the world. So the text from Matthew for today speak clearly to them. We do not do such preparations in order to be seen by others, thereby gaining something for ourselves, even status. We do such preparations to rid ourselves of all the things, to empty ourselves. We do these things not to be miserable, but rather joyful anticipation that by giving ourselves, we will be truly found. We do these things not as phony hypocrites, but rather in order to be real about who we are and where we're going. We do this in order to remember the faith that was poured into our very beings at our baptisms, and that is continually poured into us every day of our lives. We are called to rediscover who we are as God's children. We're called to face our fears and our failures with courage and dignity, relying on God's love and mercy. God does not need to hear the words of our confession that come up from our broken lives and our sin. We need to speak these words as a reminder to ourselves of our link with all humanity. The ashes on our foreheads remind us that like Adam and Eve, made from dust of the ground, we too have our origin of God's power to create. We are in this world because of a God who loved us, because of a God who formed us. Just as we die in that same moment, we are connected to Adam and Eve, for we also share in their rebellion and their judgment. And like all creatures of this world, we will return to dust of the ground as evidence that we will not endure this world forever. During the season of Lent, we learn again to face this grim reality with truthfulness and courage. In the words of our spoken confession, in the discipline of Lent, there is another reality, just as real as death, that we also face. Now, not with the shame, but with renewed hope and joy. It is the reality of God's love and God's forgiveness. It is the present and future recreation that God is working in us at all times. And during Lent, we remember that. The sign of the cross on our forehead serves not only to remind us that we are dust, but also a reminder that God has a claim on us in our baptisms. We do know that we belong to Christ. And this ashy cross is a reminder that that seal on our forehead and in our lives. And I've been reminded of this many times over the last several weeks as I visited with those in our congregation who have passed away, as I shared scripture and prayed with them, the last piece that I did was to take a little oil and mark them with the sign of the cross and saying words of remembrance of their baptisms. Remember that you are marked with the cross of Christ forever. Some of those I visited were conscious and heard these words. Others were not, but I know they heard the words and the Holy Spirit with us as I said that goodbye. It is a reminder to me that the sign of the cross we wear on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday is not only there just one day out of the year. It is the cross that is burned on our foreheads by the fire of the Holy Spirit 
to mark us as God's own in baptism. When we may show it once a year to remind ourselves that we belong to God, we remind ourselves that we die daily to sin, we remind ourselves that Jesus' resurrection is our future, we will return to dust. But God is not finished with us. We renew the baptismal covenant of God in the season of repentance, renewal, and rejoicing. In preparation, we too shed the things of this world that make room and make room for God to fill us. Though the process can sometimes be painful, it will ultimately lead us to life and life in Christ. How we prepare is a matter of what is in our life that we need to give over to God and what it is that prevents us from being the servants that God has called us to be. What I want and hope is peace with all those I know. Put an end to political divisions for all of us to think the best of one another and not the worst. And I pray daily for an end to hostility in our churches and in our world. So the good news is that my past, with its connection to the brokenness of all humanity and my future, connected to God's redemptive love, come together during the season of Lent. And they come together at all times for people of faith. We discover that the brokenness gives way to hope and a grace where God will welcome us all home. And Lent marks again the journey home for us as God's children who are always changing, always being challenged, and always looking for ways to serve others with a quiet mind. So I didn't give you the last uh, of Timo Burnett's song, The Wild Truth, so I'll give that to you now. We need the wild truth. I tell a thousand lies that twist me into the noise where I hide my sin. My shame and scandal pull me down and kiss me. I can't live a life that might have been. I need the wild truth. Are we supposed to take all this greed and fear and hatred seriously? It's like watching dust settle. It never changes. It's too consistent. Mercy is not consistent. It's like the wind. It goes where it will. Mercy is comic. And it's the only thing worth taking seriously. I need the wild truth. Let us pray. God, we pray with ashes, filling our hearts today, for the overflowing sorrow of the world, a deafening sound we cannot or choose not to hear. Bend our ears to the cries of our neighbors, the ones living down the street, the ones living continents away. Strengthen our feet to move in the direction of justice, compassion, and equality, even if it is a stumble. Quicken our hearts and quicken our pace that we may love others and also love you. Amen. <laughs>
turn our hearts in prayer to God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. We pray for the whole church, that forgiven by your grace, we may turn from sin and find joy and abundant life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of all nations, that they may turn from desires for personal power or gain in order to seek peace and justice for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all who are hungry, hurting, homeless, or hopeless. Help us and all of your people to respond to human need with mercy and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the witness of the faithful departed who now live in you and whose examples still encourage us to walk by faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant us those requests we bring to you before you now, silently, in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful and gracious God, hear our prayers. Restore us to the joy of your salvation and uphold us with your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace to everyone who is online tonight.
Please rise for the offertory.
movie singing all of this. <laughs> Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. For Christ our Lord. Amen. So now may God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and cleaned us as children of the light, strengthen you and give you hope for your journey in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lamb of God. It's number 336.